Good morning. Welcome to Yellow Door Urban Homestead. I am Asia and I'm an urban gardener growing in a small space in my backyard. So this morning we are clearing out some things. You saw that I got my last cantaloupe off of this trellis. So we're going to pull this cantaloupe plant down. We are going to plant our last seeds for the season, our last direct sowing. So I'm doing onions. I'm going to re-sow my parsnips because they did not come up. <laughs> I'm going to sow some lettuce um, and oh, some dinosaur kale because they did not have that at my local feed and seed. Someone asked me, did I start my plants this year from seed? I did not. Well, well, I did, but they didn't do well because life was very busy. Um, so I ended up buying these plants from my local feed and seed store. Um, they were $2 per container, or if I purchased a flat, they were $20. Um, and so no, I did not start these plants from seed. I normally do, life didn't work out, and so I didn't this year. Um, I'm gonna plant those things out today. Uh, what else am I doing today? <laughs> Oh, we're gonna cut these trees. We're gonna go ahead and cut these trees. Um, it's like 60 something degrees out here, like right at 70. Um, I don't see rain in the forecast, so we're gonna go ahead and trim these trees back today as well. Um, I am thinking about going ahead and cutting down the asparagus and laying it on the bed as well, um, because most of it is brown and dying. Um, we got some new stuff coming down at the bottom, but they're very small. Um, so it's not like they're growing really tall anymore. So we're probably going to go ahead and cut these. If we don't get to that today, then we will get to it eventually. <laughs> um, but that's what we're doing today. We're going to get these onion seeds in. And I have until the end of October to plant my onion seeds. So I'm going to go ahead and get it in today. Um, and then I think that's pretty much it for what we need to do today. It is that time of year where it's coming down to you don't, you don't have a lot of stuff to do, especially in zone 7B where I am. I'm sure the um, even lower zones aren't doing a lot right now either. Um, so, oh, 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 oh. And we have to start thinning. So these are radishes and things that came up. So we're gonna go ahead and thin those today as well. Um, and then I think that, I think that's it. I think that's all we're doing. <laughs> way someone asked for a nail cam <laughs> when I get my nails done so I got my nails done so this will be the first official nail cam so these are September probably gonna go into October because I got them done late I only get my nails done once a month but anywho nail cam there you go I got some cute little leaves on it uh, for fall this year so nail cam for you all right, we went ahead and pulled those out. We are going to quickly get the onions planted into all of the holes of the bricks. I had very good success growing my onions in the holes of the bricks. Um, the holes of the bricks did dry out easier, like way easier than the beds. So uh, something I'll have to remember. Oh, someone asked to see the sprinkler. Let me show you that. So that's it. I attach it to the water hose down here. Um, you can have it full where it'll go, like the full length of the sprinkler will go here to here and keep going. Um, and then you can have it, let's see, I haven't used any other one, honestly. You can do left, center, and right. But I use full so we can, you know, have a small garden area. So it'll do the whole garden from here to here and then I'll turn it and it'll go from here to here. So it's worked out well, helped me to start my seeds outside this year, which I never really have very good success with. So get you a sprinkler for fall. And like I said in another video, um, fall plants don't mind if they're wet. They're not like tomatoes where, you know, it'll bring in a whole bunch of disease and stuff. They don't mind getting wet. Um, they're very thick leaves. So uh, brassicas have very thick leaves. Um, so yeah, if you want to start a fall garden and you don't want to be watering, grab a sprinkler. It's a cheap way to do it. Um, irrigation is also a good idea. Uh, irrigation, in my opinion, is a lot of work and I don't want to do it. So I haven't done it. Um, I'm not saying I never will, but at this point, it hasn't like very much appealed to me. 
and I like being out in the garden so even if it takes me an hour and a half to water in the summer <laughs> I'm okay with that and then you also have the Oya option I've never used Oyas but I see people use them and they are just I just dropped my seeds um, they are just I guess they're clay maybe pots that you dig down and put into the garden and then it likes it it has water in it and as the garden needs it it like uh, lets the water out now me I already don't have a lot of space so to put an Oya into my garden this is just my opinion it's taking up some space so it's also why I don't use Oyas <laughs> I have no idea what this is, but it grows a very deep tap root. It looks like burdock, but I don't know. I didn't plant any burdock. Very long, very long root. Grows in a lot of places, so I always try to dig it all the way up to the bottom of the root before I plant it. I do throw it back in the bed because something with a root that long got to be nutritious. <laughs> so I am digging down maybe uh fourth of an inch a half inch i'm not sure should be a fourth to a half yes so i'm doing that i'm doing that correctly <laughs> um and i'm putting two seeds in um depending on how they grow you know if i have an extra one i might pop them somewhere else in the garden once they come up um, but for now i'm putting two seeds in hopeful for at least one to germinate and then um we can move them around the garden Onions don't mind being transplanted. They don't mind having their roots disturbed. So those are one of those things you can kind of plant in a big, like one spot and put a lot in and then separate them. I'm not doing that because it's starting to get cold. I don't want to be out here when it's super cold. <laughs> so I'm putting them where I expect them to grow. Um, and then, like I said, if there's some extras because two seeds came up, then I will move them. But I don't want to have to literally come back out here and plant them all in the holes they belong in. Okay, so the onions are in. We're now gonna do the lettuce. I planted onions like all over this garden. <laughs> it's not just in the bricks. I put some over here in between the brassicas and lined up with the beets. Essentially, they're not in the front part of this, but like they're here in between the beets and then they're here in between the brassicas. So I'm hopeful to get a nice harvest of onions um, in the spring because what happened is I did them last year in the holes of the bricks and I got a good harvest but I want enough to make powder but also have for fresh eating and I have a few left for fresh eating not gonna get me through the winter <laughs> so I put them all through the garden there's some over there in the bed too and then they're all in the bricks so once I'm finished planting all this stuff out I'm gonna turn the sprinkler on and just let it go for what it know um, and, and, but, but we got a lot more to do before then. <laughs> we got volunteer marigolds that popped up. It's pretty cool. Remember I was throwing them, the seeds back in the bed. There's one right there too. And one right here. <laughs> There's a lot. I'm going to put the lettuce across the front of this bed. So whatever is in the way, I'm going to have to take it out but I'm trying to grab all of the weeds and again like I said I need to put another piece of weed fabric right here in front of this bed where all of this I think it's called bind weed but I need to put another piece of uh, weed barrier down which I probably will so I had a lot of lettuce last year most of it went to the chickens so we're just gonna put it right here in the front of this bed cuz cuz there's space <laughs> Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull that marigold out. I don't see the point in keeping it. And I'm just moving the soil around a little bit because lettuce seeds are very uh, small seeds, fine seeds, and they need to stay moist. So I'm moving the soil around so that it can be a little more easier for them pulling out all the weeds. Yeah, I'm definitely going to get out here and put a weed barrier down. There's another marigold right there. And I could move those, but they're not going to make it through the what baby what hello girl what are you doing what are you doing 
Hey, sweetheart. I'm a little busy. Probably throw some onions in here, honestly. And I might. <laughs> like I said, lettuce seeds are very small and uh, they need to be watered often. Like they need to be wet. Lettuce is mostly water. So the soil is pretty moist over here. I'm still going to water just because. So I have Marvel of Four Seasons, Paris Island Cos, Red Romaine, and Bib Lettuce. And so I said I could probably put onions in this bed. I think I'm just going to do a row of lettuce in between those two. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how that turns out. Because these are going to be big and bushy. Um, and lettuce, not so much. There's so many worms, y'all. The way I see it, though, a lettuce plant, kale, broccoli, all of those, not so much broccoli, but like the leafy greens, they can grow back if you just leave the stem in the ground. So I do pull, I'm not going to say, I'm not pull, um, I do smush the worms. I'm not going to say that I don't do anything, but um, yeah, if it gets eaten down, even in the middle, like I've seen it come back. So, just don't freak out because <laughs> you're probably still going to get a nice harvest off of the leafy greens. Just make sure you do come out and uh, come out and, and smush them because they can eat a whole plant down. Um, and if it's not, I would imagine if it's not, um, if it's not established that that could be a problem. But don't freak out. Smush the worms. Keep it moving. <laughs> Come out and check daily if you can. I do um, when I'm here, but I wasn't here for like four days. And so that's why they look quite eaten up. Um, but I'm not freaking out. I think they'll be fine. Anyway, lettuce. You don't need, so lettuce needs to be like, hold on, let me see, a fourth inch deep. So what I'm going to do basically is go across this whole front and just like sow lettuce seeds, like all the way across the front. I can come back and thin, but um, I'm not going to take time to dig a hole and drop them in. I'm just going to go across the whole front part of the bed and that middle section, drop the seeds in, and I can come back and um, I can come back and thin. Yes, it may be a little wasteful, but also you can use the greens that you pull out um, as like microgreens on a salad on top of some meat. So not a big deal. So we're doing Marvel of Four Seasons right here. And we're just going to tap them down now. I'm not going to put a whole, you know, bunch. We're going to do halfway down Marvel of Four Seasons. So that's that. And you could just let them grow as, as microgreens. Like, you don't have to come back and thin them. It is totally up to you how you want to do this. You could mix them because then you'll have mixed lettuces as well. That's essentially all I'm going to do is go all the way down the row and do that. And then I'm just gonna cover it back up, just like that. Kinda like carrot seeds, if I'm honest. Don't need a lot of cover, and it needs to stay wet. And we're gonna do the same thing in this middle section, too, I think. Or maybe we'll just do, because I planted them right behind each other, so maybe we'll just do a few in between. I had no real plan for this. <laughs> and maybe, maybe I can still get some onions in here. I gave all of my brassicas like a foot this way, but 16 inches in between each one this year. And lettuce is cut and come again. Whether you do them as microgreens or a head, you get more than one harvest off, you can get more than one harvest off of lettuce seeds. Um, if you choose to just come out, cut the lettuce and leave the plant. Well, what you see in the stores is the whole head of lettuce. But if you're growing it in your own backyard, you don't have to do that. You can just come out, cut what you need and then leave the plant. There are a few volunteers in this bed and I left those too because because they volunteered free plants. So lettuce can withstand some cold. Um, I'm not sure exactly how cold, but they can withstand some cold. Put them in this bed 
not gonna cover this bed we will see what happens but i don't think that um you know i think they'll last at least through like december here january and february are our coldest month so they may not last um you know all the way through but until they die down i'm going to eat them so let's see we need to get our lacionado kale in we need to replant the parsnips i've never grown parsnips before i feel like i'm doing something wrong <laughs> And I've definitely not ever grown them from seed. So we're going to go ahead and put some lacionado kale in where we can fit it in. I'm not really sure where that is, but we're about to figure it out. <laughs> I'm all out of plastic gloves, so I'm going to use this to dig the holes. Because uh, I don't want to mess my needles up. <laughs> so I do know one spot we could put some lacionado or dinosaur kale as it's called. There's a spot right back here that doesn't have anything in it. So we're going to go ahead and drop those seeds in there. Um, trying to think of where else we might be able to put it. So all of my turnips didn't come up. Um, but I'm not sure I have any more seeds. So we're just going to make it work. <laughs> just going to dig a hole right here and drop the lacionado kale seeds in it. Oh goodness, I definitely didn't mean to drop that many seeds in it, but we're going to go ahead and cover it up. If we get a few plants in there, then I can move them around, maybe put them in bags. Lacionado kale is very cold hardy, um, as is most kale. So um, if, if we get a whole bunch, we'll just move them and maybe put them in bags. I'm not growing in bags this year for, well, I don't grow in bags for fall. I haven't. Um, I, I don't know why I don't, honestly. I, I just don't. Because <laughs> I could definitely put a whole bunch of kale, collards in these bags. Because they will grow in bags. Hmm. Maybe if I... Because that would be a good amount of food to store um, up for the summer. If I did. Hmm. I might, I might run by my local feed and seed store and just throw kale and collards in the bags. Maybe not all the bags. <laughs> I have a cabbage that is not doing well back here. So I think I'm going to pull that and put some lacionado kale in here. So when I say it's not doing good, it's not doing awful, but it's not doing great. That's another one that was planted when this one was, and so is the one down here. So it still has the leaf in the middle that's growing, but... I feel like it's struggling. So we're gonna pull that and drop some kale in there too. And so this is just me <laughs> trying to find space because if I wasn't worried about space right now, I would have left that. <laughs> would have left it and saw what it did. Look at these beans, y'all. These are probably purple potted. They fail and they just sprouted. They won't make it through fall, but I'm gonna leave them because you never know what could happen. Not through winter but i might be able to get something off of it i push them towards the trellis once they grow a little more maybe they'll grow up the trellis and give me some more beans but for now we're gonna drop these lacionado kale seeds in here i'm gonna move this soil around a little bit but do y'all see how easy my soil move now after i dug it that's a whole entire rock i feel it where is it well i don't know but it was in there so we just gonna move it around a little bit and then drop some drop some seeds in there just gonna drop some in there mm -hmm. oh my goodness the lacionado kale seeds is really falling in here today <laughs> so that's the lacionado kale if like i said if more pop up i'll move them around somewhere in the garden um and i'll put them in bags that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna say that i'm putting them in bags um, so now the only thing we have left is I want to drop some more carrots in some bags and then I want to replant my parsnips. Something important to remember when you're planting for fall is that these plants look small when you put them in. <laughs> like for fall, the plants look really small when you put them in. But once they grow, they're going to be huge. So while it looks like I have a lot of space left in this garden, I really don't. So you hear me saying like, I'm looking for space. And you're probably like, you got all kinds of space, girl. I really don't. I really don't. Because the plants are going to get huge, which is why I said I did 16 um, inches. 
16 inches between the plants and then the box that they're sitting in is 12 long but in between the plants across they're 16 inches so just a reminder that they may look small now they will not be small when they finish growing so just just so just so you know for when you plant these out when you plant a fall garden and I know some people said they were in spring. Lucky y'all. Lucky y'all. But I guess you just came out of winter, didn't you? <laughs> of, uh, yeah, you just came out of winter. So, lucky, but also still, you just came out of winter. So, let's see here. Let's read the back of this packet. Just like I don't like reading the instructions on products, I'm not a fan of, I'm not a fan of reading the instructions on packages either, but I will for this because I did not do it white. Okay, so it's saying only a half inch deep um, once the soil is workable. So I'm assuming I'm trying to overwinter these is what I'm doing. Because once the soil is workable would mean I should be planting them in spring. <laughs> Y'all don't talk about me. <laughs> so we, we still go plant them out. And so... I think instead of putting carrots in bags, because I was able to get carrots to germinate in this bed, I'm going to make this whole row parsnips. I'm going to attempt to make this whole row parsnips. And then right behind the carrots that already germinated, I'm just going to drop more carrots. So it'll be a whole line of carrots, a whole line of parsnips. And then, um, like, there are some turnips that came up. I think maybe these are rutabaga back here and then the rest is radish so we're gonna go through and thin those two today um we again we got a lot to do today this might end up being a two-part video depending on what it looked like when i um what it looked like when i start editing it so it's saying a half inch oh something's coming up right here oh i think that's another nasturtium that volunteered pretty sure that's what that was but we got a lot of nasturtiums that volunteered. Listen, I know y'all like, what is she talking about? Stop talking and plant these seeds. I'm about to do it. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do them like I did my carrots. But they're not big. I mean, they're not small seeds. That's interesting. Wait, can y'all see? They're not small seeds. It says a half inch deep. They're not small seeds, though. So, I'm just going to do like, I'm just going to do like this. And if these don't work this time, I'm coming back through with onions or something. Because my time is drawing near with the planting. At least direct sowing. And then I'm just going to do it like this. I have some rainbow carrots, which I think are so pretty. We're going to go down there. See right here, the carrots germinated. We're just going to put some more carrots back here. Another volunteer, Marigold. <laughs> right here, I'm pretty sure we're parsnips. I don't have any parsnips coming up. So we're just going to finish the three carrot rows. But look, I got really good germination on the carrots, y'all. Pretty excited about that because if you've been here... Oh, I thinned one by mistake. <laughs> if you've been here for a while, you know that's not my strong suit. Right here, we're just going to dig a little burrow of sorts, just like we did with the parsnips. And we're going to connect these carrot rows. Just like that. I think y'all are crooked. Sorry. Let's try to get you. There you go. I'm going to put some carrots in here. Again, just got to make sure you keep them. Keep them moist. Hope I have enough seed. Yeah, I have enough seeds to do this. And carrots have been said to have low germination. So I do overseed. And then I can come through and... I can come through and um, thin them. So just like that, and then I'm going to just kind of toss the soil back over them. Just like that. If you have any big pieces, I would break it up just to be, just to be safe. All right, so just like that, we are done planting seeds for the year. 
And yeah, I think I'm gonna go to my local feed and seed store. So here's the thing. If I decide to plant in these bags, I also still have to amend these bags. That's the plot that's probably gonna keep me from growing. <laughs> that's the plot that's probably gonna keep me from growing in these bags this year because I don't particularly want to. I, I'm tired. Y'all ain't tired. I'm tired. <laughs> All right, let's get down here and thin some of these radishes. I still have time. So maybe I thin the radishes. Maybe I thin the radishes another day. <laughs> Actually, I think I'm gonna end this video. I'm tired. I wanna go in the house. Maybe later on this evening, I'll come back and finish it out. This, You know what, it'll be a two-part video. Let's just say it that way. I may come back out tonight. I may not. We are gonna go ahead and turn this sprinkler on and then um, I'm gonna say goodbye. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Don't forget to visit me over on Instagram where I post about the things going on in the garden almost every day. Bye y'all.